you Namrata. Let me now just share my screen with you people so that you let me know. Is it coming? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I thought I'll just show this first case. This case came to me from Poland. He is an actor there, one of the top actors in Poland. And he had this problem where there was a corneal damage, obviously, as you can see there. Plus, look at the aerodialysis. It's a huge amount of aerodialysis, and it come right to the center. He has an IUL also inside the eye, as you can see. So I'm taking off this epithelium to see better. Now you'll see slightly much better. And you can see I'm first tip is I need fluid in the eye. So I'm fixing my trocar AC maintainer there. Now I've got fluid going inside the eye. Remember the simple trick, there is a capsule present. So I don't need to go from the back rather than fixing an infusion candle in the back because there is a capsule already or fixing an AC maintainer. The trocar AC maintainer goes through the sclera half millimeter from limbus and it is snugly tightly fixed. Now, wherever the aerodialysis is, and you can see the aerodialysis there, right opposite it, I'm fixing my second trocar. So you can see again, this trocar, you can go through sclera, go through cornea, whichever one you are comfortable in. Once you have done that, look at the next step, which I'm going to do. I'm making my side port incisions. I've also created a groove, if you notice in the sclera, in the area of the dialysis. Now I'm taking a double armed proline needle. So this is the double arm proline needle. This is the hangback technique, but we have taken it to the next step by modifying it using the trocar assisted aerodialysis repair. Now you notice that proline needle has gone through the iris. From the other side, 30 gauge needle going through the scleral groove. Now I connect the two. Once I have connected the two, you will see the needle coming out through the scleral groove. Railroad technique pulled it out. So far, so good. Now remember, this is a double armed proline needle. See, the advantage of the trocar understand is I am right opposite the area where I'm operating. It's very tough to pass that through a clear corneal incision. The trocar helps me. Second thing is when I pass the trocar and the needle through the trocar, you see my needle does not move and rotate. Otherwise, I tell you what, it rotates so much, it's very difficult to catch the iris onto it. Now watch, I've passed the second arm. I'm holding on to this. And now I will pass my needle into the iris. Now this is the second arm. Again, you can see from the other side, I've taken the 30 gauge needle and I'm going to bring it out. So this is the trocar assisted aerodialysis repair. Now, once you've got both the arms out, as you will see just now, all I have to do is pull. And when I pull, and you can see, I'm just going to pull it out. And you can see there it's pulled. And now all I do is suture it. And that goes into the groove. Now you can do this as many times as you want. So look, I'm just rotating that, tilting it a bit, the trocar. And the same trocar is being used for my remaining portion of the aerodialysis. Because it's like a fulcrum. It just moves. So here you can see now another portion of the aerodialysis being repaired. We have published this also in the European Journal of Ophthalmology in the EGO. It's already been published there. Now, once I have done that, the problem now what happens is, remember, when I pull the iris and pull the aerodialysis to one side, the pupil gets large. So to solve this problem, we have this technique, which is the fourth row pupillosity. And using this technique of the fourth row pupillosity, you'll see me, first of all, I'm going to break these sinicae which are present there because this produces glaucoma if there is a lot of anterior sinicae there. Once I have cracked these anterior sinicae, my next step is I want to make the pupil smaller because the aerodialysis repair has happened, but still my pupil, because of that repair has become distorted. So now I'm doing the single pass fourth row pupillosity. I pass the needle through the clear cornea and once it's there, you see, I'm going to through that area. From the other side, I'm going to use a 30 gauge needle. Remember one thing, you don't need a paracentesis on both sides. You just need it on one side where the throw is going to come out. Railroad the two. Once you have railroaded it, I will just bring it out here. And once this needle comes out, you'll see the loop comes out. It's a single pass. Use just four throws and the game is over. So that's game, set and match. I have to also say, Narang had helped in this work so much in this 
fourth row, few plus three, pioneering it. And once you have done this much here, you can see here, I've done this portion. Now, all if you want, I can also do more on the top portion. Here, you can see now the top portion of the fourth row pupil plus three being done there. And now you'll see the pupil coming back to shape. Now, at this stage, if you get a vertical slit like that, you can take a vitrectomy probe. Remember, fluid is all the time going on inside the eye. All I need to do is make it a bit larger. You can use an endodiathermy, which Ike showed beautifully also, or use this. But look at the Perkinji image. It is bang centered. That is the key point which you are looking at. Once I have got this both done, now my next step is, remember the <clears throat> endothelium was totally bad. So just, I've got air now continuously, the same air pump, which we talked about before, I just connected to the uh, trocar. Now I take my endothelium here. You can see this is the type one bubble. So this is the PDEC graph which is present. We never do DMEX because please understand in DMEX, your donors are 40, 50 years. We don't do DSEC because it's too thick. In PDEC, you get the advantage of both DSEC and DMEC. We take only young donors. Once we have prepared that, take it into the injector there. Now, all I need to do is inject it inside and complete this case. Remember, this was a big shot patient who came to me from Poland. So I had to be very careful that everything goes in one shot because there was no way he was going to come back to me again from Poland for treatment. Now, once I have got the graft unrolled, my air pump comes on. Once the air pump is on, I've got air infused inside the eye. Now I can just unroll my graft a little bit as much as possible. Now the question comes, how did this patient behave? So let's just see how this case behaved at the end of the day. This is the patient post-operative day three. That's three weeks post-op. You can see how the patient is two months post-op already. The patient has improved to 6-6 six, six vision. Saying that, one other case which I thought I'll just show you. And <clears throat> I hope it's seen. Yes. Okay. So this patient had another injury patient there. And you can see there, I've just put the corneal suture there. It's quite dense, the cataract. So I'm not able to see very clearly, but still we have brought it out. I know there has to be a rent, obviously, in this case. So I want to be safe. So I'm bringing my nucleus out of the eye. Once I've been out of the bag. Once it's out of the bag, I'm much safer. I've got my air pump on to protect myself from my endothelium. You can notice I've already made my scleral flaps present there for the glued oil because I know there is a huge foreign body also lying inside through this wound there. Now I fixed my trocar inside the eye. This case, I've done a trocar infusion from the past plena. I'm doing my vitrectomy and I'm also removing my cortex at the same time. Now in this injury case, you notice when I'm doing my posterior vitrectomy, you'll see a large foreign body and there's a little bit of detachment also stuck there. The whole wooden piece has gone through and through the lens, produced the cataract, gone through the retina. So I'm now catching that, and I'll now bring it out slowly and steadily. Once my intraocular foreign body comes out, and you'll see just now, there it has come out. It's a large foreign body. It looks small inside, but when you bring it out, you realize how large this wooden piece is. And I know Mohan has done a huge piece of a drumstick injury also, which had won in the ASCRS Film Festival. I remember I was the Film Festival judge at that time. And his video on foreign body had won some award at that time. But look at the large piece of foreign body. I brought it, lying it above the iris. Now use the handshake maneuver to bring the long axis of the foreign body in line with the long axis of the incision. And in the long axis of the foreign body, in line with the long axis of the forceps. Once the foreign body has come out, you can see there, I now take the lens and I have to implant the intraocular lens inside. That's the measurement. As you can see it's about 11 millimeter intraocular foreign body present there. I suture the sclerotomy because we have just made it a bit slightly bigger. I do my vitrectomy over the retinotomy to clear the whole fluid which is present there. But now I want to fix my IUL before I fix that retina also. So I make a small iridectomy there. The reason of the iridectomy is will help me so that I can come more anteriorly when I'm doing my glued IOL. Here you can see now the glued IOL coming. So all of you, if you're doing a glued IOL with large white to white, just a small iridectomy will help you because that small iridectomy will help you come more anteriorly. Now I've done the handshake technique. I'm going to move on to. Here you can see the faucet being transferred from one hand to the other. Once both the haptics are tucked in, my next step is 
I have got the glued oil in place. My foreign body has been removed. My vitrectomy has been done. But look at the pupil. It's still large. So I need to make that smaller. So again, this technique which we do is the single pass, four throw, pupillosity. So once that is done, I make that pupil a bit smaller to complete the case. Here you can see the second part of the haptic getting tucked into the chariot's pocket. And there you can see the second haptic getting tucked inside. You can adjust it. And that's why I like still the glued aisle so much. Now, once I've done that, and you can see now we are doing the fourth row pupillosity, making the pupil smaller. Again, remember, one side, you can just go through the clear cornea. I see many people doing paracentesis on both sides. It's very tough to pass the needle through a paracentesis, especially the proline needle. So you don't need to pass it through a paracentesis because remember, the loop is going to come out only on one side, the side where your 30 gauge needle is. So just make one side that, and you can see the pupil coming back to normal. Once you make this pupil a bit normal, you see life becoming much easier for this patient because remember there's an astigmatism also created by the corneal wound. So here you can see now the second fourth row pupillosity coming out here. The advantage in this compared to circlage, which I see is it's much easier and much faster. Whereas with the circlage technique, which is a great technique started by Greg Ogawa, the problem which I see is a bit more complicated, but if you're good at it, it's fair enough. Once my fluid is coming off, all I need to do is do my endo laser, as you can see there. I'll fix the retina there with the endo laser, and that completes this particular case. And you can see here the end result there. So last thing which I just thought I'll just show you is, if you can see that, that's the latest book which we have brought out with us, three of us on it, on mastering iris repair by Slack, which covers all these various techniques which I've talked to you about. So saying that now, I'll stop sharing my screen and shift it over to Namrata and Gaurav and Mahipal.